We got a bunch of matches after last night's AEW show, and one more show, which is the Go Home Show. This may as well have been the Go Home Show because next week they're going head up with Fallout from the election. Mm. You may as well not even be on TV that night. We got John Moxley versus Eddie Kingston in an I Quit match. FTR versus the Young Bucks, and the stipulation is. If the Young Bucks do not win the AEW Tag Team titles, they will never challenge for them again. Now, Cody did this a year ago. And when I first, when I was watching the show and they made this announcement, I, man, I wasn't a big fan. I, I dislike it less today after Dave gave his thoughts on the whole thing. But we can talk about that in a moment. We got Hikaru Shida versus Nyla Rose. Cody defends against Darby Allen. The World title, uh, title Eliminator Finals, Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page. Chris Jericho versus MJF. If MJF wins, he will join the inner circle. An elite deletion match with Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. And Orange Cassidy will be facing Long John Silver on the pre-show. So that is the lineup. And a lot of different angles last night. You mocked me yesterday for being excited about Halloween Havoc, but man, that show was good. That was a really good show. So overall, a fine night of Wednesday Night Wrestling. we get into de- details here in a bit, but Mike, what did you think of these two programs? They were both good shows that moved things forward for their brands in their own ways, and I actually thought, here come the boomers and the, uh, the assaults on Twitter, but I actually thought NXT was the better show. You can... You know, the Cameron Grimes, Dexter Loomis match is uh, is always those matches are just going to be referendums on what you think about uh, cinematic wrestling, because that for the most part is what that was. Actually, it was all the way up until the very end, even inside the ring uh, in that universe and realm where we actually in pro wrestling go back into the ring uh, to finish the match. They even put all the special effects on there and made it a Michael Jackson thriller scene and Hey, you know, it's Halloween, I guess, so you're going to get that. But if you take that out of the mix, I said last week, you know, one of the pluses of that I've been seeing is Raquel Gonzalez's presence, you know, just in the ring. No, but it, as a presence, she has grown to me tremendously and is certainly out of Dakota Kai's shadow uh, of just being her heavy. And I thought yesterday, holding up to her end of the deal with Rhea Ripley, who's a great person to be in the ring with, I thought she came across great. And you're still going to have to be obviously very careful with her as they continue to build her up. But I thought that was fantastic. I think Pat McAfee is fantastic. I know not everyone does. I thought he was tremendous. I thought the way he was able to you know because he comes across again because he's not you know out of the wwe promote you know promo system you know he felt like a real dude and him spinning what he did and and now the guy that injured my guy i'm bringing on to my team and he's bringing his guy and here we are and i thought that was great i think he's fantastic um and really the biggest i think the other big high point for me off of both shows last night before throw it back to you is eddie kingston and john moxley it's a no-brainer obviously but they continue to hit on something every week. And in this case, it was that video promo that John Moxley had where they were showing Eddie with the rosary, and it's just Moxley cutting the promo on him, and I thought it came across so good. And if they do another one next week of Eddie uh, doing the same thing with Moxley, I think that would be great. But th- their their interactions have been fantastic. And then Eddie's promo afterwards inside the ring, you know, it just iced the cake. This is, if they continue on with it, I don't know how it'll go. But, you know, as far as short feuds of the year go, I mean, it's a, it's a slam dunk for me. All right, a couple of quick notes. We had Hangman Page beating Wardlow. This match was excellent. If you, whatever expectations you had going in, and this was kind of the story of last night, this exceeded those expectations. Wardlow looked great. They gave him everything before beating him. It didn't hurt Hangman. It absolutely helped Wardlow, so that was a home run. Moxley and Eddie Kingston built up their match. What can I say? They're both excellent at this professional wrestling game. Kingston beat Seidel and then made him say, I quit. Basic build for the pay-per-view. Young Bucks did their promo, basically announcing that if they don't win, they will never challenge for the tag titles again. Town Hall meeting. It started out very wacky. We had Luchasaurus asking questions as a dinosaur. It was funny, but it was wacky. And there's like a level of wackiness where if it gets too wacky, you can't take this thing seriously. 
But in the end, when MJF and Jericho finally went face-to-face and got serious, I mean, they're fantastic. So that's the storyline. MJF has to beat Jericho at the pay-per-view to get into the inner circle. We had Orange Cassidy and Cody in a lumberjack match, which I will talk about more later because I was very angry last night, but anyway, I'll talk about that in a moment. Serena Deeb and Layla Hirsch was very good for the NWA women's title. We had Penton, Kenny Omega. Obviously, Kenny Omega won, but they had another excellent match. Kenny Omega beating him with the one-winged angel. And then for NXT, Johnny Gargano beat Damian Priest. False count anywhere. It was a Devil's Playground match. Uh, False count anywhere and no count out, they added. Just so we didn't have another WCW moment. Mm. Pat McAfee, the segment where him and Lorkin and Birch beat up Kyle O'Reilly with help from Pete Dunne. There's now a new foursome, which will probably lead to a War Games match. Dude, if you don't like Pat McAfee, I don't know what to tell you. What is there not to like? He's the greatest heel. He's a fantastic promo. He's doing his job. You're supposed to hate this guy. He's the greatest. Phantasma and Jake Atlas, I don't even know what's going on here. This I was baffled by. Non-title match, Phantasma beats him in three minutes. What? Haunted House of Terror? That needs a segment of its own. Rhea Ripley, (laughs) Raquel Gonzalez, fantastic. I mean, again, for whatever you were expecting, it exceeded that by like ten times. This match was so good. And then the main event, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae, tables, ladders, and stairs. I presume everyone is alive, they but they did a lot of crazy stuff. And falling through ladders and a suplex under the edge of a chair. I mean, some of this stuff was too dangerous, but it was a hell of a match. Io Shirai retains. And hey, we got a storyline coming up where this family wanted to both win titles at the same time. And Johnny did it. Candice failed. So, that may not end well, or that may lead to some marital strife. Uh Uh-oh. I guess we'll find out, but... Everybody in the Twitch chat's obsessing about my shirt right here. Yes, it says, dismember the body. No, I'm not a serial killer like Dexter Loomis. Those of you that are subscribers, I'm sure you've heard my buddy Mark. This was Mark's band, Dismember the Body. And he gifted me this shirt 15 years ago. Wow. And all of my clothes, I, I did a giant load of clothes, and they were all in the washing machine. This was the only shirt I could find, so I wore it here today. Uh, sp- speaking of giant loads, what's, what do you call the font on that shirt? I'm, I met Mark in, like, 2005. I was doing some student films, and I had this resume. And resume for what? I'd never done anything. So I put author of Death of WCW on my, on my acting resume. And Mark was the director, and he looked at my resume, and he hired me instantly because he'd read Death of WCW. And the rest is history. So that's why I'm wearing this shirt here today, everybody. Man. What have you ever done, Mike? Get out of here. D- done lots of things, although at 15 years, you know, that shirt is ready to challenge for the, uh, the WWE Championship and get involved in the, uh, the Randy Orton Edge. Hey, feed. listen, there's one of us on this show right now that can still wear his clothes from 15 years ago, so... Get out of here. (laughs) Hey, I got comfortable, pal. Leave me alone. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes. Over 300 at current count. Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.